Switch of Bleeds have L.A. Nick with us at the game this evening, and we invite him to throw out a ceremonial pitch. Nick, it's your pitch. I didn't even, I didn't even get it to the over grass. I, I hit the grass. It bounced in the grass. It bounced in the grass. And I think it bounced. You know what? It bounced in the grass and then rolled. My first guest on tonight's show, he is the author of Life is Short, Then You're Dead Forever, as well as the mayor of Minneapolis after dark. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome L.A. Nick. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, appreciate it. So uh, how did you kind of come up with the title for the book and the idea of all of it? Well, you know, I, I found myself in a situation in life watching a, a lot of my friends in what I call like the comfortable state of, of the stagnation. Like, they were comfortable, they had money, they had a job, yeah. they had a house, but most of them were pretty unhappy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed a kind of an epidemic happening of everybody self-sabotaging their own lives to get out of their situation. Really? So say they're, they're married with kids and they have a job. They, they're in a loveless marriage, no longer, you know, it's a loveless marriage, yeah. no longer in love with the person. They have a job they hate. Mm -hmm. So instead of just saying, I want out and doing something about it, they self subconsciously self-sabotage with either drug addiction, alcoholism, or infidelity yeah. until it falls apart. Mm -hmm. Then they can get out. Yeah. So they, they waste 10 years crashing it and then five years rebuilding it to do it again. Oh. And it didn't make any sense to me. And I'm like, you know, we only have, like most, like you probably have about 500 months left to live. Yep. I have about 300 months left to live. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. Yeah, yeah, it really isn't. It's not. Yeah. So life is really short. And the older you get, the quicker the years go by. Yeah. They really do. Sure. They start going like that. Yeah. And you're like, wow, where'd it go? Mm -hmm. So I got to a point in my life where I felt like I wasted 10 years. And I just wanted to make it a point to live more. Mm -hmm. You know, to live those days yeah. hard, strong. Yeah. So this is basically a self-help book for people. It is a self-help book, okay. and it's, it's about living a better life and getting yeah. more out of your life, mm -hmm. you know? Because sure. I don't think people get what they could be getting out of life. Yeah, excellent. So how did you end up in Minneapolis? Well, that's a long story. Uh, <laughs> I was yeah. living in Los Angeles. I lived in Los Angeles for about 15 years, once for five in the, in the 80s and 90s, and then I left, went to South Florida, ended up back in... LA uh, in 99 and stayed there till just five years ago and I was I invented this green screen video booth to audition mm -hmm. for TV shows and we came and tested it in the Mall of America. Oh really? I stayed here for 13 months and on my last day here I met my girlfriend Nancy. Wow. And uh, we started texting and asked her to come to LA she said no way <laughs> and uh, so I came yeah. back and seen her and stayed. Yeah. So you met on the very last day? We met on our very Man. last night. The, the night, last the night, night I was up. here. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's luck. Yeah, it is. You never know what li where life's going to take you. Yeah. So while, while you were here, you, uh, you didn't name yourself L.A. Nick either, right? That's kind I of didn't. A, when yeah. I first moved here, people, people said, you know, who are you? And where, you know, I said, oh, I just moved here. I'm just visiting here from L.A. Yeah. And uh, I remember the first time anybody called me that. I remember who it was. It was a girl that was a bartender. And, she introduced me to somebody, oh, this is Nick from L.A., and the person said, oh, L.A. Nick, and it just stuck. <laughs> yeah. And I tried to get rid of it for a while, but there was no getting rid of it. Yeah. It spread like wildfire. Uh -huh. So then I just embraced it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like a Midwest thing to give everybody nicknames. I think I've kind of noticed that here. I think so. Yeah. I think there's more here than, uh, but L.A. has, people in L.A. have a lot of monikers, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just, I would, it was a fish out of water here and yeah. stuck out that's and true. just stuck. And then, you know, people were always like, even, even when I first came, they're like, oh, what band are you? I'm like, I'm not in a band. And they're like, yeah, you are. And they, like, they would think I'm somebody that I wasn't. And even if I said I wasn't, they would still, yeah. they wouldn't even believe it. Yeah, exactly. They'd go, no, this, is, this dude's insane. And I heard every band in the world, I, you know. But even if they just, they want to believe what they want to believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I got tired of saying, dude, I'm not in that band, so I just don't say anything and walk away. You because just, yeah. <laughs> it's not worth I mean, they don't believe you, and they think you're a jerk if yeah. you say you're not. Mm -hmm. so. For sure. we got to take a quick break okay. real quick. We'll be back with more Ellen and Nick after this, everybody. Nick, 
Now, you, uh, you, you were actually featured on a documentary on Showtime, correct? I was, yeah. a, a Pauly Shore docu po documentary on Pauly Shore's life. Yeah. So are you a regular on that then? Um, well, it was, only, it was only a documentary, so it was just a one okay. to a 90-minute. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. One-time deal. Would you ever do your own, like, documentary? Um, I wondered if it was the right subject. Yeah. I, I w was worried about doing that one. Um, I know Polly very well. I've known him for a very long time. Yeah. He tends to make other people look bad <coughs> oh, really? to make himself look better. So I was worried about the edit. And, uh, but I was lucky that I got a really good edit, yeah. and he kind of made me the voice of reason. Huh. He kind of made himself look bad, hmm. which is not very unusual for Polly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So how did you guys kind of meet each other? I met Polly through his mother, actually. Really? Um, his mother's Mitzi Shore, who owns the comedy store mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. I had become friends with uh, Dean Gelber, who was the GM at the comedy store for a very long time. He introduced me to Mitzi, and... Uh, I met Polly through him, her, and just kind of—they kind of took me in. Mm -hmm. They were a big part of uh, of my life in Los Angeles. Yeah, and uh, kind of picked me up when I was down. Huh. Yeah. So then you and him just kind of hit it off from there. Um, you know, I never really hit it off that great with Polly. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually I hit it off with with the with with his, the family and mm -hmm. with the what I call the comedy store family. Okay. The comedy store, people think it's just a, a comedy club. It's actually a clubhouse for comics. Really? And every famous comic, that's just like their house. It's uh -huh. like their home. Yeah. And uh, I just, I don't know. I was just, they just took me in mm -hmm. like that quick. Hmm. So I met a lot of people. I mean, I met Robin Williams there. I met tons of people through the comedy store. But, yeah, but the Shore family itself has been very good to me. Yeah. And a lot of people don't like Polly. Really? I don't like Polly at times, <laughs> um, but I can't say too much bad about him, personally. I mean, like I said, they've been good to me. Yeah. So. Well, he seems like a nice guy. I've never... A lot of people don't like Polly. Really? Yeah, you, huh. even on his Facebook page, he did a lot of bad comments. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll find that any, anywhere you go. It is. You know, when you put yourself out there and yeah. put yourself in the limelight, mm -hmm. you get hated on. Yeah. No matter how nice of a guy you are. Yep. And Polly's sometimes not that nice. Yeah. But I'm always nice. And I still get hated really? on it. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you currently up to now? Um, you know, I've I'm, I'm, uh, been shooting a lot of videos, if you mm -hmm. noticed. Yep. Um, putting them out. I'm trying to bring out my comedic side. <laughs> okay. Um, I like making people laugh, mm -hmm. and I'm a big fan of comedy. I could never be a stand-up comic. I never yeah, would, me neither. I would yeah. never even try to be a stand-up comic, mm -hmm. ever. But I do think I'm funny. Yeah. And I think I'm funny physically. Mm -hmm. So on video, I come like I I'm pretty funny, yeah. I think, and and I think my videos are funny, and you know I just posted one the other day, and it's it got two thousand views in one day nice. on Facebook, so it's you know yeah. it's not bad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm just keep plugging along at those, and uh, I got a couple of projects in the works with networks, mm -hmm. so we'll see what happens. Right. Nice. So you, you, so you so never know in this business. Yeah. <laughs> so you're more of like an improv comedy then, rather than stand up, right? Yes, pretty much. Okay. I I prefer I I I think stand up's the hardest job you could ever have. Yeah, you're on a stage with nothing in front of you. There's no guitars, no drums. And <laughs> yeah. You have to make people laugh. Yep. And if they don't laugh, you just stand in there. Yep. I yep. could never do it. I've never even tried. But I've seen people tank, and I, my stomach hurt for them. Yeah, you're just like. Oh, like I just feel sick for them. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was up there, I would just run away. Behind <laughs> 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 the curtain. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Yeah, cry yourself to sleep. Yeah. But yeah. All right, L.A. Nick, thank you so much hey, for coming on the show, everybody. Buddy. Thanks, man. Yeah. We'll be back right after this, everybody. is a Twin Cities comedian who performs all over Minnesota as well as the author of Board of Education, A Long Ride on the Short Bus. Please welcome Chad Philly. Hey, thanks. It's great to be here. Yeah, good to see you. So how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, I started in 2010, although uh, my teachers back in high school would probably say in the back of the room was when I really started. Oh, really? So. <laughs> uh, how long have you been? You're also a teacher as well, right? Yep. Okay, how long have you been teaching? Uh, I've been teaching uh, just about 20 years, so really? I think that's kind of purgatory or payback for all the yeah. misery I brought other <laughs> teachers in my time. So. so with those kind of two things combined, do you kind of, do students kind of heckle you 
Well, that's one thing. You know, I, I really do well against hecklers if they come in the comedy club. Oh, because, really? You know, I mean, I face them every day. Uh, you know, there's always some kid who thinks that they're going to try to one-up you. And, and uh, you know, and it's just it's been good training for me. There's yeah. no doubt. So every single show you've had, you've had a heckler? Oh, no. Not, no, not no, shows. Okay. Not every, every single classroom. Yeah, oh, hecklers are really rare. And, and the thing that po me, most people don't realize about hecklers is they think they're trying to help. Um, you know, most of them aren't mean. Who's your favorite stand-up comic? Uh, there, there's so many. I mean, you know, George Carlin, you know, he had the kind of the intellectual side that I liked. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld, kind of the observational. So, yeah, you know, there's just so many. And, I mean, there's so many good comedians out there today. It's, it's really fun to, mm -hmm. to just be part of that world. Yeah. So you have, like, a specific venue you'd eventually like to play someday? Um, well, you know, I've, I've performed at some small rooms in Vegas. Uh, yeah. I was at the Grand Old Opry. I don't know if uh, I told you that or not. Oh, no, you didn't, yeah. Yeah, so I got to actually perform right after uh, Restless Heart and right before Martina McBride. So, so that was really fun. Um, in, in order to do that, I had to dance in front of 8,000 people. Uh, that's, uh, as you can see, I'm pretty white. And uh, the dancing was pretty scary, but uh, I got a, good, a lot of good laughs. What did so. you have to dance to? Uh, there's some country song that they played. Oh, well, that's not too bad. No, no. It was at least it wasn't rap music or something. Well, like that. yeah, it wasn't like a twerking song. Yeah. Or well, I actually did some twerking and. Oh, uh, did you really? Yeah. So that you know, and they, which of course the crowd brought down. So. Oh. It, it was it was pretty fun. I'm not going to ask you to twerk. I, I appreciate that. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to. <laughs> you said we had to keep it clean, and that would cross the boundaries. Well, rel relatively. Relatively. Yeah, yeah relatively. So yeah. Anyways, uh, we're going to take a commercial break. So we'll be right back with more Chad Phil when we come back. <laughs> All right, we are back with Twin Cities comedian Chad Philly. Now, Chad, have you um, have you seen the game we play on this show? Ah, uh, yes. It's not really a game. I just I say a word, and then the first thing that comes into your head. Okay. All right, ready? Yep. Pre-loved. Prefabricated. Uh, <laughs> Jum Buck. Tuco. Uh, apple knocker. Apple. <laughs> Dolly Parton. <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, thirst land. Last one. Thirst land? Yeah. Uh, boy, I don't know. Sahara. You're actually pretty close. It's uh, African word for desert. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I understand you brought your uh, your son. Yes, I brought it. Yeah, yeah. So if we could bring him over, you partner in crime. Come on, buddy. Now, what, what, did you say what kind of dog he was again? Uh, he's a half uh, pug and he's half French bulldog. Oh, wow. So some kind of people call him Frugs, and I just say he's the son I always wanted. <laughs> now, how old is he? Uh, he's eight and a half. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So. Now, does he do stand up with you? Uh, I have actually brought him on stage once. Oh. Um, I've been thinking about getting a big head. One of yeah. those, you know, big heads made, but uh, yeah, it's it's hard for him. As you can see, he's not too too keen on the lights. And oh yeah, so he's flying the... that one chick in the audience. <laughs> 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 like, All the cameras. All right. Well, you want to do some stand up for us, if if yeah, possible. That'd be great. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And I think uh, one thing that I've noticed in the last year since I was a school uh, uh, since I was a student is that uh, there's dress codes, and thank God there are dress codes because if there weren't. You know, the girls, they'd probably be wearing next to nothing when it got warm out. Uh, the boys, they'd have their pants down low, and they wouldn't be able to outrun the cops. And, <laughs> you know, that wouldn't be good. But uh, my thing is, there should be a dress code for the general public. You know, and if you don't believe me, just go, go, go to Walmart. You know, doesn't matter what time of day, and you'll probably change your mind. <laughs> you know, every time somebody tells you they're gluten-free, they say it just like they're stopped seals from being clubbed in Nova Scotia. I mean, seriously, I'm <laughs> gluten-free. Okay, now with that said, I'm gluten-free. But the reason I'm gluten-free is I have celiac disease, and if I eat gluten, it rips up my intestines. Now, you're wondering, what's gluten? Well, it's pretty much anything that has taste. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I buy, ended up buying a gluten-free pizza the other day, took one bite, threw away the pizza, ate the box. <laughs> it tasted a lot better, and it was a heck of a lot more nutritious. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, in gluten-free bread, oh my God. Everybody's like, oh, you've got to try gluten-free bread. You've got to try this. No, it's either too dry, it crumbles. And they say, well, you've got to try Udi's. No, no, people, it's you die. It's not Udi's. <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing. Try it. I put an entire jar of Miracle Whip on there, 
right? You sucked it up. It's got to be the only known food that's a, uh, approved by the FDA that the main ingredient is cat litter. <laughs> not, not a gluten-free fan. You know, and, and kids nowadays, what, what's the deal? When I was in school, first, second, and third place got a ribbon. Nowadays, first through 99th place get a ribbon. <laughs> what color is a 99th place ribbon? Gangrene? <laughs> Entity gray? <laughs> I just don't understand it. You know, a kid crosses the monkey bars. They think they need a trophy. You know, it doesn't matter that mom was holding little fatty's legs and he fell six times. He thinks he needs a trophy. And if we continue to spoil kids the way we are, I mean, it's getting ridiculous. Before you know it, when they grow up and get divorced, they're not going to get divorce decrees. They're going to get participation medals. <laughs> And, I mean, seriously, a kid gets the sniffles nowadays, what's mom do? Bathe them in sanitizer. That's not how it was when I was growing up, man. I'll tell you what, if somebody got chicken pox, you know what happened? They took you over there, so you got chicken pox. Except for my dad. Uh, he was way too cheap. Yeah, my cousins, they got chicken pox. You know what he did? Well, he had to mail us a blanket, and he made his roll in it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you.